Um, these are the technologies that we study, and all of these technologies, from biotech to 3D printing to nanotech to robotics to artificial intelligence, aspects of all of them are now doubling every year or so and are on that same trajectory. Right? And we've brought together at Singularity many of the world's leading experts on these areas, whether it's uh, Vince Cerf, who created the IP address system under the internet, or Craig Venture, who sequenced the first human genome, and all of them are seeing and actually pushing the boundaries of this level of disruption. We challenge our students every summer. We have a, a summer program. We bring together 80 students that come from 40 countries. They form teams in one of these areas, and the challenge we give them is come up with an idea that would impact a billion people within 10 years, and then launch it. Uh, so at the end of the summer, we launch NGOs, for-profit companies, research ideas, each trying to objectively address a major global challenge. Uh, this team from a couple of years ago looked at poverty, and they noticed that most of the roads in Africa get washed out during the wet season. 85% of all the roads disappear for seven, uh, several months of the year. And how do you alleviate poverty if you can't move anything around? Right? Uh, Chris Anderson uh, that summer came and did a talk. He's the head of Wired magazine, and you're all familiar with these quadcopter drones that are all the rage now. And they had the idea, why not use uh, drones to deliver medicine and food, especially where there are no roads? Um, and so this is a live test from Haiti where they're delivering medicine to a camp. What's interesting about these drones is they, all the underlying technologies are moving so fast, whereas today they can carry about a five-pound package about eight miles. That's the capacity of today. They're doubling in their capability every nine months. Right? So by the middle of next year, it's 10 pounds. By the end of next year, it's 20 pounds over that same distance. And that scaling keeps going. Right? And so in this case, we're teaching them to spot these doubling patterns, build products and services on top of that, and then your, pro your solution scales with the underlying technology. Um, and to give you a sense of how disruptive this can be, we actually have the CEO of the largest tire company in the world uh, come in with the senior management. He said, this is great, but I don't, just don't see how this disrupts my business. Uh, I sell 80% of all the truck tires in the world. Uh, he said, great, uh, you know, these drones in a couple of years will be picking up 20, 30 pound packages each. And he said, yeah, but I pick up 100 pound pallets uh, for, uh, when we do these deliveries. And I said, great, so you get three drones and they pick up one of these 100 pound pallets. And you could see his mind break right there. Right? And you realize, holy geez, this actually could impact my business. And so these weird effects of these, of these technologies going into areas that you would not expect, you would not expect that drones would affect truck tires, right? And yet when you see these orthogonalities, we're seeing that type of thing happen. You may have seen this announcement from Amazon where they want to deliver packages using drones. This was inspired by this particular project of ours. Um, how many of you saw this announcement? Okay, so Amazon wants to deliver packages using drones. They announced this uh, last year. Um, complete fake, by the way. They had no such capability at the time. But they managed to get a story onto 60 Minutes the day before Cyber Monday. Uh, and so this was a great uh, story to tell. Uh, they're now actually putting a lot of investment into it, so we're thrilled to see that level of investment. Their PR people were extremely happy at the outcome of that. Uh, we also do one-week executive program similar to what Henry came to. And I think we have, where's Daniel in the room? Daniel is sitting at the back. He's one of our alumni. And you can spot our alumni. They have kind of sleepless look around their eyes after they go through a week of our programs. Um, here's something interesting, and I think this brings home how uh, dramatic this is. We, brought, we do this event with Deloitte where we bring together for four days the CEOs of the Fortune 500. Right? So there's some of the logos of the CEOs in the room. We do a four-day event where we give them a briefing about these technologies. Beforehand, we ask them, how aware are you of some of these technologies and some of these breakthroughs? And you might expect most had very little or no idea about some of these technologies. At the end of the four days, we said, how big of an impact will this have and when on your businesses? And look at that statistic there. 80% agreed that these technologies would have a game-changing impact on their industries within two years. 100% right? within five years. And all of them had an, uh, an, an urgent action item when they got back to the office. And that's the gap that we're trying to bridge. Most people have very little sense of what's coming down the pike. And when they do, there's this kind of like holy something moment around what do you do about it. So um, this is a, probably the most interesting attribute of our model. This is from our curriculum planning meetings. Because we update our curriculum so frequently, we actually have created a real-time curriculum development methodology um, we actually gather our entire faculty every couple of months and we revisit every lecture. And we've noticed that the content that we teach changes by about 25% a quarter. Right? Just because the underlying technologies are moving so fast in biotech, for example, we've had four major breakthroughs just in the last year. And so we've had to, it takes us enormous effort to keep pace with that pace of change. So let me give you some sense of what we're seeing uh, out in the world. Um, 
The first, and this is fairly uh, uh, obvious at one level, is that we're digitizing the world, right? Uh, all of our memories, our memories aren't in our heads anymore, they're in our smartphones, right? All of our relationships are now digital via social networks, not analog, right? If you're below 30 years old, you're, the appearance of your Facebook profile is much more important than how you're dressed that day. And we can tell by how they're dressing these days that that's actually, actually the case. Um, and as we, got into, we hop into that digital world, Everything hops into that information curve and the acceleration starts going. Um, you may have seen this chart from Peter a couple of years ago. The laptop over here that's running my presentation 10 years ago had the equivalent computing power of the brain of an insect. That's how much raw computing power it had in it. Today it has the equivalent computing power of the brain of a mouse. Right? In 10 years it'll have the equivalent uh, computational power of one human being. And shortly after that, it'll have the equivalent of all seven billion human beings on the planet in the equivalent of $1,000 worth of computation. And the question is, what would we do with it? Right? We have a sense that we think that technology is really hard to predict and we don't know where it's going. We know exactly how fast your smartphone will be in three years or five years or seven years. What we lack is the imagination as to what to do with it. By the way, if you have a smartphone, uh, you have more computational power in it today than the entire U.S. government had at its disposal in the 1980s. Right? That's why if it runs a bit hot, that's why. There's a lot of computational power in each of your smartphones. Um, and so this uh, dramatic change is effectively powering everything that we do. About 10 years ago, we had about a half a billion connected devices on the Internet. Today, we have about 9 billion connected devices on the Internet. So we've gone from half a billion to 9 billion over the last decade. By 2020, we'll have 50 billion connected devices. And shortly after that, we're going to a trillion. Right? So think about just that one metric. We think we're 30, 40 years into the information revolution. If we're going from 9 billion to a trillion in the next 20 or so years, we're essentially 1% of the way there. We're literally just starting this level of disruption. What will that world look like? So most of that change and most of that disruption is actually ahead of us. We're just literally starting that pattern. And once you digitize something, we have this extraordinary disruption that takes place. 